Good afternoon, I'm Brandon Eisner. I'm the leader of market research and insights for CBRE. And I'm here this afternoon with Natalie Castillo, who's first vice president of capital markets on the hotel side. Natalie, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. I'm glad to be here. Thanks, Brandon. Sure. So we we're talking a little bit last week. And you know, obviously, the pandemic has affected air travel, both internationally and domestically, which has significantly impacted the hotel industry. But what's been interesting to me is that the drive to markets have been performing relatively well. Perhaps cabin fever is getting families into their cars and they're finding places to go outside of their home. Now, in our talk the other day, you mentioned seeing some added activity in the limited service, you know, roadside hotel market. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I would say, like you, you just mentioned, the activity has been much stronger in the drive to markets, uh, coastal markets, you know, Tampa, Daytona, Jacksonville, a lot of these markets have actually been performing much better than many other markets throughout the country. Uh, we have seen a lot more interest in limited service, select service assets because, again, their performance is quite strong. We've even seen some properties that are only down uh, in the, in the, you know, low teens, um, eight, 12, 13% year over year, which is pretty spectacular. We actually just, uh, sold a couple of weeks ago, a, uh, property, a limited service hotel in Fort Lauderdale. It traded at a pretty attractive room revenue multiplier. And a lot of that is just because people would rather make money today than maybe make money in a couple of years. So they're paying up. Um, in, in a lot of instances for these properties that have continued to cash flow through the COVID pandemic. Well, that's great news. I'm sure a lot of people will be relieved to hear that. Now, we're also talking about Miami Beach and how the city's using this time to reimagine some of their districts like, districts like Washington Avenue and, and Ocean Drive. Uh, you know, Ocean Drive, they've temporarily shifted it to a pedestrian-only oriented district. And do you think moves like this could encourage new activity within that market? Definitely. I mean, we were discussing how Ocean Drive kind of went through this whole resurgence, redevelopment. You have a new Moxie, Citizen M, tons of new retail restaurants coming into Washington Avenue. A lot of those uh, got a little bit stalled because obviously COVID happened, but they will be open. A lot of them are starting to reopen already or open for the first time. And I think that, like you mentioned, Ocean Drive is going through a shift. It's going to shift drastically. There is talks to make it uh, permanently a uh, pedestrian only, make it more of an art district. And I think that that's going to create generational events uh, for investors to come in and have an oceanfront property in a location that's going to be something completely different than what we think of Ocean Drive today. All right. Well, that sounds like a once in a lifetime opportunity. All right. So now on to the lightning round. You're a hotel person. So where's your favorite place to travel in the world? Paris. Hands down. I love Paris. All right. So let's say you're in Paris and you're looking at the Eiffel Tower, that great view. What would be your ideal cocktail to have at that time? Uh, cosmopolitan. Definitely that would be my go-to. Very good. Can't argue with that. I will, everyone, this has been three minutes with Natalie Castillo. Thank you very much.